any means necessary. Any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will ensue. I have a dream. satisfied as long as the Negro is the fifth victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. Who taught you, please, who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin? Hello, welcome to Young King True Tell. This is Kanye Tetsubo. Today, I'll be talking about science and interlinked to spirituality. Science has always been interlinked with spirituality since the days back in Africa before colonialism. The people of Kemet, they purposely placed their pyramids on the coordinates of 29.979.2458 North, which is the exact number that the speed of light is. The Dogon people, they discovered series A, B, and C, which can be seen in the night sky for those who are in rural areas. Series A, B, and C are three stars interlinked, two of them circling one another, the last being at its distance. But many people know them as Orion's Belt. Many great African civilizations are built on ley lines. These ley lines are believed to have given them a spiritual advantage over other people. But white scientists would like to say that it's extraterrestrial. Another great example of African people studying science through people are about the chakras. It's all about raising your energy and becoming one with your higher self. One great example of this is seen through the Kemet stories of Heru, Aset, and Asar. Heru being your higher self and his uncle Set being your lower self. The story has many endings, but the one I'll be telling you now is the one that I know, with maybe the alternate ending. It goes, Aset, a woman from Nubia, or Kush, fell in love with a man named Asar, who was from Kim. She had the most beautiful skin seen throughout the entire land. She was raised to be a queen. Asar, he was the ruler of Kim at the time. He had a brother named Set, who was jealous of him. Aset and Asar were meant to be married, but things did not go as planned. Because Set eventually murdered his brother, Asar. After he murdered his brother, he cut him into pieces and scattered them around Kim. When Aset learned of this treachery, she went out and collected all his pieces. This is how the first mummification came about, because they mummified his pieces back together. It was later then that Asar came to her in a dream where he impregnated her. That impregnation eventually turned into Peru, who was born nine months later. The battle of Peru and Set would later take when he's older. During their battle, Peru eventually lost his eye, his left eye, to Set and was forced to retreat. Eventually, he came back and won. But on the verge of killing Set, Aset stopped him. Sparing his uncle, he banished him out of Kim. But at the same time, he was so badly wounded that he eventually succumbed to those and perished. He then raised into the heavens with his father being at his right side. But Asar, after seeing him, sent Heru back to the earth for a higher purpose. And the alternate ending to that story would be Aset was not able to find all the pieces but one because a fish had eaten it. 
that how this relates back to African spirituality is these things are not to be taken literally but to be taken as what it is a story things that you can see in nature in human nature itself jealousy and how it affects other people and how to overcome it to not give in to your hatred of another and these stories then were stolen from us and given back to us as bible stories Cain and Abel Jesus and the devil Joseph would be Imhotep from real life but that's a, that's a different story our set being Mary who nine months later gave birth to Heru the virgin maculation because at that time our set was still a virgin since she had never had sex with her husband who was murdered even the stories of the Orishas have something to do with human nature and discovering nature in itself giving nature names to understand why nature is the way it is is the way African spirituality has always been it's never been about worshiping different gods but more of looking inward and looking at the world as an observation and discovering it like that and for me that has always resonated deeply even with the stories of, of Nazi and hearing his tales of being a trickster but mostly tricking the god or so to help out mankind or even to show you that no matter how small you are that as long as you think use your brain you can get out of any situation one example of this would be the story of when a Nazi tricked an elephant he invited the elephant over to his house and the elephant was sure to think that he was going to kill the spider but he didn't because Anansi had also invited other animals over and when the elephant got to Anansi's house and sat down he killed all the other animals but Anansi came out alive so the elephant was shocked when he saw that Anansi was still alive and this type of stories are meant to make you think and that's all they are are just stories but they have been taken literal as as far as my spiritual beliefs go i would say it's complicated because i see the world through this these eyes of spirituality and science being interlinked for me I do believe that there is a such thing called God and it's discovered through science that we can prove that there is something much higher than us for the most part when I was a child I was raised in a Christian household but we went to a Baptist church and eventually for me I just didn't want to keep going to church so one day we ended up going to like this parking garage I believe with my grandmother and it was then that something overcame me something that I could not explain just it just whoosh right through me and it was from that that I, I I believe that's when I started to question religion because it wasn't like a regular church it was done out of a garage for one night and one night only and that feeling has always been a part of me I believe that's also around the time that I started to be able to raise my energy a lot more I've gone to many different churches and for me all of them have, have always been the same they are commercialized 
they don't have no soul to them or any real depth. So for me, as a child, when I stopped going, it seemed like I was missing out on air. And I believe that was around when I was at least six or seven. It was when I was eight that weird things started happening, uh, I would say. Like, I know this is going to sound very unbelievable, but these are things that happen. I started to see what most people believe are spirits. But, but according to my grandparents, I've always had that ability, I would say. But for me, they became more clear around eight. I've seen things like spirits eating bread. And it scared me to the point where I would duck under the covers, close the doors. I would hear voices that other people couldn't hear. I was, I would say, traumatized by that, just a slight little bit. And as I got older and I became more and more distant from religion, these things became more and more clear to see, more apparent to hear, to the point where I believe I've gotten in contact with the God King. I call it the God Gene because scientists know it as dark matter, dark energy, and dark flow. It's something through science that you could discuss, that you could see and observe, but at the same time, not see and observe. It's a known known, but it's also unknown unknown. And it's through this God Gene that I believe this being that we can't see or even understand or even comprehend has always been talking to me through ringing in my ear. Some days I can understand it, some days I can't. It all depends on how my energy is, whether I'm highly focused or if, or I'm just in an eh type of mood. And when I say that, it's, I know it's, I know it's unbelievable and not many people will understand, but this is this has just been a constant thing for me for years and to actually understand it, I guess you have to have experienced it for yourself firsthand. Because I will I, I will question things in religion, especially when I will question people in different religions and no no nobody could really answer my questions and the answers i did get were not too much of anything looking forward to like my like i would say an old friend of mine he is a seven day event and i had finished watching that tv show spartacus when it was popular at the time and one day he came over and I pretty much had a question for him that I think I caught him off guard with. The question was, what happens to those people who were born before Jesus? Where do their souls go? What happens to them? And a typical response was, they're just sleeping until the day of reckoning when they can repent. So... I ask after that, how would they know to repent? How would they know that they have sinned when they have always had this way of life before Jesus, before any of those other things? They had their own beliefs, their own God that they believe in. So how can we expect them to give up what they believe as a, as a dead person to worship someone else? And I believe it was at that moment that I, I pretty much had stomped him. Because it was a question that I, I don't think no one has an answer to. But according to Dante's Inferno, an epic, epic poem by the poet Dante, who met the other poet Virgil, who died years before Christianity, that people who do not know Christ and was born before him 
all are in purgatory. So, in my mind, I'm like, if everyone who died before Christ are in purgatory because they didn't know Christ, wouldn't that mean that no matter what you do in life, you're destined to go to hell? Because these people, they have no choice or any purpose for being born before him. It wasn't by their choice to be born before this so-called God. So they are damned to hell for just being born. No matter what the situation was or what they've done in life. They could have done many great things in their life, but yet they're still damned. And this is the type of thing that I just could not accept. Because that type of logic just made no sense to be damned to something just because you were born years before this person. And it eventually led to me thinking even more into the into it, where I eventually came up with this theory that God, or what we call God, is a woman. And this is before the, the I believe many conscious people or whole tabs or whatever we whatever people want to label themselves to say. And I, I, I say this is 2012, 2013, before any of this, before I even discovered people like Dr. Johan. And I came to this, this conclusion or theory looking at the way the world works and the way the world revolves. That man and woman are into it. That is through woman that more life is born. So wouldn't it be safe to say that this it'll be the same for a God? And this is through me thinking in a science term. But at the same time, science would dictate that that's not possible. But at the same time, science also believes in the Big Bang Theory and or the Inflation Theory, which would be one believes that something created itself from nothing. And the other believed that something was already there and exploded into something. And as complicated as that sounds, it is. Because you just can't take nothing and create something. Something has to already be there in order for you to create something. And I believe that's the same thing with how, with religion, or at least God, in a sense. You just can't say that this person just was just created themselves, and that's that's all. That's it. But we're just gonna accept that they create themselves, and then they create us. Uh, no. For me, something has always been there. Something greater than what we believe. And after it, after it was in place, years later came along us. And this is where I start to come up with the idea that just maybe looking at the planet itself when you see how beautiful the planet is you look at the plants the trees the mountains the different elements you and you then come up and then you hear the terms of mother nature father time it, it starts to play a little more of a role a bigger role that maybe, just maybe, what we call God is a woman. And she is both the creator of the universe and of the planets. Because every planet in itself, outside Earth, has some type of beauty to it. Even the sun and the different stars and the different shapes of these stars. And how they burn at different degrees and become different colors. Because my, not many people know that the hotter a flame gets, it changes its color. And I believe the hottest is white. But what a lot of people also don't know is 
stars themselves are black body objects that can't be seen from a planet. You have, or they can be seen on a planet, but from outer space, you don't see nothing. Which is where the terms dark energy, dark matter, and dark flow come into place. Because they're there, but you just can't see them. Dark energy would be like gravity. Everything that's on this planet, everything that's in space, is controlled by this energy. Dark matter would be what pushes them apart. And dark flow is what's always ever expanding as the universe grows. And I like to change those terms to calling them the God gene. Because it's always there, it's always known, but we just can't see it with our eyes. Unlike regular matter, we can't see dark matter or the God or that part of the God gene. But we know it's there. What also a lot of people don't know is you can even find alcohol in space. And I, I, I would like to believe that God or or this God gene isn't a drunk, but the fact that you could find actual alcohol in certain in clouds in space is actually hilarious to me. So when people start drinking and we call it spirit there you go but for me this god gene has a has parent itself and we're a reflection of it because black people are the most connected to this gene and to this idea of there's something being higher than us out there but it's not really higher than us as much as we are of it so we are up one the fact that everything has this blackness this pigmentation and it's all interlinked into one through science and spirituality it's it's really not it's really just hard to believe but at the, at the same time when you see it for yourself it's amazing because when you when you first learn of dark energy dark matter and dark flow you think it's just all science fiction but then you start to really observe how space works itself radio waves uv rays how how these things can actually heal the body itself because ultraviolet light actually helps black people it gives black people energy so imagine if we were to build space colonies or go to different planets how our genetics would be perfect for these conditions but anyone white it would kill them because it's not meant for them it's meant for us and you could just tell that the universe adores black people because of that energy that's always being sent to us but you have to be on that level to be able to understand when this energy is speaking to you because it will come to you as a vibration ringing in your ears for me that that that, that being has always talked to me whenever I think I'm going to get in serious trouble as a kid or even back in high school or even now as recent as a few months ago at work it's always come to me and sometimes it comes to me very vague and when and when it does that it could be annoying because the messages are not clear and I sometimes ignore it, and me ignoring ignoring it leads to some pretty interesting results. When I was working, it came to me one night, and I believe the message was, I need to leave this job, because this is not meant, this is not what was meant for me. 
And at the moment, I understand. I, I talked to some other black people, and pretty much that's what that's their interpretation of what it was telling me. Me, I still didn't believe it, even though by now it's proven that it's real. It's there, and I should not ignore it because a few weeks later, within that same month, I end up getting sick to the point where I could not even get out of bed. I got sick and was in major pain. And it forced me to actually resign early because I had put in my two weeks at this location. And it's, it's, it's funny how that happened. Weeks after this message from this higher being came to me and me putting in my two weeks at that location and then I get sick to the point where I'm not able to even go back to that place at all. That for me was was a, was a clear indication that okay, yeah, you definitely didn't want me back there for some odd reason and I just take it as that. As a kid when I did stupid things. Like we made a video one day in school where one guy didn't like this girl, the other one liked her. I had edited it and everything, placed it on YouTube. It got taken down because of the girl. And in my mind, I'm thinking I'm going to be expelled because this is when I was in 12th grade and we were just chilling. We were just having fun. I was ready to graduate and this could actually stop me from graduating. And I'm freaking out, panicking, and then this energy, again, it vibrates that energy in my ear and telling me that, hey, chill out, you're going to be fine, no worries. And I'm like, chill out, what you mean chill out? I'm about to get kicked out, I'm about to have, I'm about to not, I'm about to be the one who doesn't graduate in school, and I'm just going crazy. So Friday comes and they call me to the office. All the parents are there. The other two guys are there. And then the police, they just pull us to the side and say, hey, you're fine. We just want to, to bring y'all in and let y'all know that everything is all right, that nothing is going to happen. And that we just go back to class. And I'm just sitting there, I'm just standing there like, what? What? what, what you, uh, we're, we're fine? We're, okay, cool. Shoot. And eventually we learned that the police, they laughed at the video. They thought it was funny itself. The God gene is something every black person has. And that every black person is connected to this unseen force in the universe that links us all. That's why they even say black people have this thing of where we can have telepathy. If we don't need to even say something to another. We just look at each other's face and instantly already know. The God gene is essentially something that links us all. And It'll always be there, even when we die. Because we don't just die, we become one with that universe into that expanding space called the dark flow. And it's in that moment that we become one with this God. So it's like we're living as God to become God. And that's why there's a such thing as reincarnation where we, where we choose if we want to come back or not. Some people feel, some people who have been re- reincarnated possibly felt like they didn't do enough in their life and want to do more. So they come back. That's why they say in Africa we live through our ancestors. And there's this idea in Africa in their spiritual beliefs that your ancestors are not really dead, they're with us. 
But America and all other countries have demonized our spiritual beliefs and deemed them to be barbarous. They call our doctors witch doctors. They call our healers witches. They've even turned voodoo or voodoo against us by saying it's devil worship when that is the actual spiritual belief that helped free those people of Haiti. Modern day voodoo has been integrated with Catholic beliefs and Catholic saints. When just like every other African spiritual belief, it has its, it has its science base but backing it up. And we must take back these ideas and principles that our spiritual beliefs are a scientific belief. We must not let them dictate what to what we believe and give them back their religion and their God. We are not Christian, Catholic, Muslim, or any of that. Those are their gods. And we have had ours long before them. They took our stories and gave it back to us. Let's give it back to them. To fight an oppressed nation, you must have your own and give them back theirs. <laughs> and if you're interested in learning more about African spirituality, there are a ton of videos on YouTube and a ton of books you can read. Because reading is fundamental. And the more you read or even listen to the people in Africa tell their story of their spiritually from them themselves, not someone who say they are from Africa, but isn't, but someone who is actually from Africa lives there. Because when you get it straight from the source, it's pure gold. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of The Uncanny Truth Teller with Kanye Titsko. If you like more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Follow us on Anchor at The Uncanny Truth Teller. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And with that being said, thank you for listening. Bye.